Canadian football is in a dangerous position. Despite qualifying for their first World Cup in almost 40 years, things on the home front are a bit of a mess. Last year, rumors circulated that Canadian soccer was filing for bankruptcy. The Canadian Premier League is on a knife's edge after splitting with their major broadcasting partners, and their MLS clubs all had below par seasons, especially Toronto FC. The former MLS Cup champions finished dead last in the entire MLS, boasting the likes of Insigne and Bernadeschi, this was the disgrace. So today, I'm taking over Toronto FC and I will be restoring the glory to both club and country as we rebuild them using only Canadian players. A huge challenge ahead of us here, lads. Here is the opening lineup that we start with at Toronto FC. But besides Osorio, the majority of the top players here at Toronto FC, they are not Canadian. In fact, after 73 rated Jonathan Osorio, the next highest rated Canadian player on our squad is 64 overall. And whilst you think of Canadian football, you think of the likes of Jonathan David and Alfonso Davies. Besides that top cream of the crop, there is not much depth of talent. So we need to bring in a whole new generation and a whole new era of Canadian football. First things first though, let's get all of the non-Canadian players out of the club. I'm predicting there might be a few more last place finishes before we hit the top. First things first, we're going in for a new goalkeeper. There are not many insane talents coming up for goalkeepers here, but we're going to sign Dane St. Clair from Minnesota United, 1.85 million pounds. And on the very same day, we sign one of the best young midfield prospects here in Canadian football is Mael Kone joining us from Watford, 2.7 million pounds. Now this is a player that I'm actually excited about. And I mean, I load up the game, I load up our career mode, I check our youth academy. This is a part of the problem. We have a Greek, a Uruguayan, a Portuguese, and a Swiss player in our youth academy, but that's not gonna help. We need Canadian players coming through the system. So I'm putting that into effect straight away. We have an American scout by default in here, but we're getting a Canadian youth academy going in. Nine months, gonna see what position, what players we can bring back. But the clean out of non-Canadian players Begins. Luke Singh off to the Romanian League. Shane O'Neill staying in the MLS but heading down south to Orlando. And whilst I'm trying to clear out players, there is also a young core of Canadian players that I'm interested to see if we can grow them to be decent. DeAndre Kerr falls into this category. He's off to Nashville on loan. And the same here with the right back, Marshall Ruddy off to Atlanta on loan. And whilst we're getting young players in that can grow up over the years, we need some star power in the squad if we're actually going to stay somewhat competitive. I don't want to get lost every single year. So we're going to sign the defensive midfielder, Stefan Ustakia. I've definitely pronounced, pronounced his name wrong, but apologies for that. We're signing him from Porto. He's going to be a huge pick up to the midfield. Big player departure here, though. One of the best young prospects on this Toronto side. It is Cassius Melula, the South African attacking midfielder heading to Ajax, 3.15 million pounds here for the prospect. Knowing Ajax, they'll probably turn him into a superstar. But selling a player means we can bring in another player. This signing of Kamal Miller is very similar to the St. Clair one where I don't know if we're gonna win the league with him, but he's definitely bridging the gap. The man that's just transferred to Portland in real life from into Miami is gonna be leaving Portland and coming back up north of the border. Got a nice little routine going on right now. I signed an experienced, established player, then I balance it out with the younger guy, Jaden Nelson, joining us here, coming back to Canada as he leaves Rosenborg. But because we're in the MLS, the windows are flipped. So we just finished the January window. Didn't get as much work done as we wanted, but we're going to start the MLS season, keep trying to sell players behind the scenes and continue Project Canada. And hopefully find some absolute studs in the process. Going to keep trying to sell players behind the scenes though, as we simulate through this first half of the season. Alonso Coelho, the Spaniard heading to Poland when the window reopens. But well, let's go see where we're sitting in the MLS table once the summer window opens. So as we enter July, things are going quite well. But I think a lot of that comes down to the fact that a lot of our non-Canadian players haven't been sold yet. We still have the Insignes and the Bernadeschis of the world, which means we're not eligible to complete the rebuild until all the non-Canadians are gone. But this is a good start, and it probably shows, at least on paper, how Toronto should have gone last year. But we did get some deals done for the two players I just spoke about. Insigne will be joining Liverpool on the 1st of July, and Federico Bernadeschi will be joining RB Leipzig, 13 million pounds and 19 million and a half, respectively. So we're about to buy a lot of players here in the 
summer. The youth academy is going decently as well, though, lads. Found some decent prospects. Some have definitely not progressed as much as I wanted them to, so I'm going to release them. But some of them I need to give a go to. Jesse Smith, I'm going to promote to the senior team. I know his potential is not great, but there is not much hope when it comes to Canadian center backs at the moment. So we'll promote him and see how he goes. Now that Insigne is gone, we need someone to step up and fill in that role. It's not, this is not my end game player, but I'm going to get this guy for the meantime. Jacob Schaffelberg from Nashville. One, because he looks like a half decent prospect. And number two, that mullet is the stuff of dreams. As someone that's kind of trying to, I mean, my mullet's all right, but like Jacob Schaffelberg's, that is, that is, that is what I'm trying to get to. I've definitely changed my mind with Smith, the defender. Originally, I was going to let him play on the side, but 62 rated, I may as well send him off on loan and get somebody in now, which is why we're going to sign the 70 rated defender, Derek Cornelius here from Malmo, bringing him back to Canada. But I definitely think center back is going to be a problem for us long term so i've brought back logan jones we're going right back to canada but we are only going to be scouting center backs on this trip we need a prospect of the future that is going to be a star defender for us because miller and cornelius they don't have that long left and they don't have that much potential to give i'm going right back to the defense here though lads alistair johnson will be joining us from celtic this is massive this is a dude that we could ride the whole way to the final alistair johnson 24 years of age 75 overall. This is my end game player at the right back role. And of course, I'm still keeping my eye on Alfonso Davies. I would love to get him at some point of this rebuild. He's actually left Bayern Munich and gone to Barcelona for 56 mil. So we're still a fair time off being able to get him to our club. So in the meantime, we're going to convert Kobe Franklin to a left back and give him that starting role so that our entire starting 11 is Canadian. Curious to see how Jesse Smith's time at Huracan does go. He goes to Argentina and I'm praying he comes back as a stud. More than likely our final addition to the squad here in January, it is going to be for the center midfielder, Matthew Chonier, joining us from Montreal for 1.9 million pounds but we have still got so many non-Italians in this squad that we need to get rid of. If I can't sell them before the end of the window, I'll honestly consider releasing them so that we're eligible to win the MLS in season number one. It might hurt us financially in the long term, but if we can have ourselves a chance to make this a one season rebuild, I'm going to take it. Let's go. We finally got another non-Canadian player out of the club. The German Prince Uwusu heading to Romania. And that is all that's going to happen as we get out of this window. So I'm, I want us to be eligible this year. Sean Johnson is gone. I'm getting all of the non-Canadian players out it's gonna hurt us but we need to be eligible and we need to move past this era and we're gonna have to promote some of our youth academy players because our squad size is too small at the moment my god and i mean it's probably not the best but i'm gonna go for some of the older players just because they're more likely to try forcing a release a release they're nothing crazy so it's probably not gonna hurt their development too much but i'm gonna promote a bunch of these guys into the starting squad just so we can release more players and i'm going for the guys that aren't gonna like i don't want to ruin the potential of the alex sullivan's of the world or the peter grays and with that, ladies and gentlemen, our squad is now entirely Canadian. Let's go see if we can get into the playoffs in season one with Toronto. What a turnaround in season number one by Toronto FC. Last place last year in not in the, the Eastern Conference, but the entire MLS. We are now third. We have finished two points behind into Miami for top of the East. Points wise, though, Seattle Sounders win the Supporters Shield, but we are in the playoffs. And in the first round, we are going to be facing at Atlanta United. All right, here we go against Atlanta. We are at BMO Field in Toronto here. Atlanta traveling north. How are we going to go in our first playoff game? With Toronto, we win it 1-0. Akinola is going to get us a win here. And unless it's like real life where they have the two legs in the first round, I believe we're going to be moving on into the next round. Yes, we do. We are on to the conference semifinals where we're going to be versing the Philadelphia Union. And we come into it on great form. We won the manager of the month. On the road now, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen traveling to Philly. Can we keep it moving here against the Union? They've been so consistent over the past few years. Can we knock them out in this round? No, we... What is that? That is the worst penalty shootout in football history. A 1-0 penalty shootout. Have you ever seen anything like that? in your life it's three all philly equalized in the 119th minutes and then they go on and win a one nil penalty shootout 
Nah, imagine the scenes if that happened in real life. A 1-0 penalty shootout. Only in the MLS. The dream is over here, though, in season number one. We're gonna have to have another crack next year, but at least we know things aren't as dire as we initially thought they would be. Surprise, surprise. Into Miami, win the MLS. That's going to be our biggest challenge, overcoming into Miami. I mean, we'll have to verse them in the conference finals if we do, which Philadelphia did. But into Miami are going to win the MLS here in season one. And even less surprising is Luis Suarez winning the golden boot with 28 goals. Did Messi even make the list? Messi did not make this list. My God. Did Messi, is Messi still playing for into Miami in this save? Because he's not in the, list, uh, the assist list either. Messi, Leo Messi. Wait, no, that's a double S. I, I typed in one S and I'm like, why can't I find it? Leo Messi here is still into Miami. Still 88 overall. Okay. He just must have had a stinker. All right. I think we're desperately going to need a new striker next year. Akinola. Six goals is all right. But when your defensive midfielder is the top goal scorer, you know things are an issue. I mean, Schaffelberg was only here for the second half of the year and he bagged five and two at left wing. So yeah, we're going to need a striker, a star striker, if we're going to go and win an MLS with this Canadian only side. It was a monster season one, but bring on season two. We wanted a new striker this year. Jonathan David, not in our budget yet, but we are making a signing that is going to serve us really well. It's a big upgrade, upgrade on Arcanola here. It is Kyle Lahren coming back to Canada from Mallorca. 5.3 million pounds for a 75 rated striker. He could do wonders in the MLS. He is one of the hottest rising stars in North American football. Buchanan signed for into Milan recently in real life. And if I'm making this video in a year's time, this guy could be so much higher rated, but we're gonna bring him in now, right back. We already have a quality right back. He can also play left mid, right mid. I'm gonna use Buchanan as a little bit of an experiment here in season two. I feel like if I play my cards right, this is either gonna win us a MLS title or it might just be that we destroy his potential and have to use him as a reserve. I mean, he is so versatile. Four weeks to get him left wing, four weeks to get him striker, four weeks attacking mid, Midfield four weeks. He can play just about everywhere, but center midfielder and ironically center back. But I'm going to be making Buchanan a left winger. See how he goes. Will Adams looks like an incredible prospect. And I know I get a bit of flack in videos when I promote players too early, but we're not going to have 10 years to do this. I'm going to promote a lot of these players. In fact, all of these players, except for Johnson, who is only 15 years of age and try getting them some loan moves here in season number two. Peter Gray looks like an absolute stud as well here. 86 6 to 92 potential. I'm excited for the future with this guy. But I'll definitely be checking the free agents list in the summer window because it hasn't populated with the regens yet because technically we're still in the past with the way that MLS works in FIFA career mode or EAFC career mode. The loans have started to come in thick and fast. But in terms of the starting 11, besides the additions of Laren and Buchanan, the starting 11 stays mostly the same here in this second season. But we have kept 18 million pounds in our budget and that is because there are a few players on my shortlist that come back from their loan spells halfway through the season that I want to spend some money on. But let's go see what sort of a position we find ourselves in. Can we make a push deep in the playoffs this year? 1st of July, we are sitting fourth in the Eastern Conference. Very similar to where we were last year. Equal on points with my favorite MLS club, FC Cincinnati. It's quite funny though to see that there's another club in Florida starting to take over. Orlando City are absolutely crazy crushing it. I mean, they're only three points ahead of LAFC, but they are on track to win the Supporters' Shield at this point. But we need to beef up this squad so that we can compete again in the playoffs. Here it is, lads. The first man I knew I wanted to go in for this guy, and we have got him into the squad. It is Theo Colbinu, the right midfielder, off on loan last year, so we couldn't bring him in straight away, but we've brought him in now from Wolverhampton, and he is going to join us for 7.1 million pounds. And we've been absolutely shafted with the free agents list. No regens coming in here this season. Maybe because now this is the starting point of career mode, so they'll start to populate next year. But I was really hoping they'd populate this year. But another player that was off on loan to start off his career, we're going to bring him in on a permanent. It is Liam Miller, the former Liverpool player, joining us here from FC Basel for 3.6 mil. But he's going to be another experimental player. The thing about Canadian football that I've found out, at least from a FC and career mode standpoint, is they are stacked 
stacked when it comes to midfielders like left mid, right mid, left wing, right wing, but just about everywhere else they need help. Second in the Eastern Conference, but Orlando City look like they are the team to beat. Just two losses all year, 76 points. LA, it, it has to be an LAFC versus Toronto versus our Orlando City final. If we can get there and ruin the party though, that would be phenomenal. But we are in round one of the playoffs again finishing second this year and we're versus new york red bulls we got through in this round last year but can we back it up we are home this year taking on new york red bulls this is a big first game every game single elimination and we go are you kidding me we i'm not gonna say we dominate them but we lose at home to new york red bulls what do we have to do to get over that hump we are out early in the playoffs again I didn't think we were going to win MLS this year, but I thought we could easily win the East. Not easily, but make at least make the Eastern Conference final out in the first round. That is a huge upset. And so it is going to be the Philadelphia Union winning the MLS this year. How did, where is it? Orlando went out in the, that is the ultimate choke job. Orlando, two losses all season. And then they lose in their first playoff game. And the same thing happened with LAFC. Both LAFC and Orlando, who barely lost the game all year, went out in the conference semifinals. Conference finals, Philadelphia and Seattle go through. And then of course, Philadelphia, who we lost to last year, are gonna win MLS. I mean, that's a step up. Kyle Lahren, he got third, 16 goals. That's good to see. But I want Jonathan David so bad up top. This gray guy that we loaned out as well gets nine goals and two assists on loan at New York City FC and gets himself up to a 68 overall, which is brutal. I mean, Will Adams went up to a 68. Some of our young players doing pretty decent here. But man, first round exit in the playoffs is so disappointing. We need a big move next year. We need to go all out to try winning MLS in our third season. We need the money, lads. It's going to be a one and done season for Laren. He came in, did us a job, got us a first round exit, but we need the money if we want to go and get Jonathan David this year, putting it all on the line, getting seven and a half million pounds to send him to Monza. We are going to need to get a deal done here. It's market value of 36 mil for Jonathan David. Chief executive said 43, but I need to be resourceful. I'm going to offer 36 and see what they say. They want 43, eight, which we can do, but there might be some wiggle room here. I'm not bothered about the sell on clause because once we get him, I'm not going to be selling him 40.8 can we get for jonathan david yes we do oh my god we might actually get jonathan david back in the mls i'm not even sure if i can say back because i don't think he ever played in the mls back to canada at least the contract offer has been submitted and now we play the waiting game and we get it over the line ladies and gentlemen that might just make us favorites here in the eastern conference jonathan david will be joining us from Sevilla, 83 rated. He would have to be one of the highest rated players in the MLS at this point. Although ironically, he's not even the highest rated player on our squad. Equal highest rated, that is, that's a good omen. A significantly less chaotic transfer window than we've been used to at times in this rebuild, but we get the man we wanted for so long, Jonathan David. I would love it, go out there, set an MLS goal scoring record for us, please. Most importantly though, get us first place in the East so that we can go out and not have to deal with the first round of the damn playoffs. And to add fuel to the fire, our captain Jonathan Osorio is retiring at the end of the season. Let's go get the shield and the cup for him. All right, we are this year's Orlando. It's looking like Orlando are not even in the top. Like they're not even a playoff spot yet. Orlando have gone from two losses all regular season last year and currently here halfway through the season they sit bottom of the mls it's also terrible to see fc cincinnati down there but we've had one loss in this first half of the season and sit nine points clear at the top how's the western conference okay so right now it looks like it's between us and lafc to win the supporters shield there's finally some canadian regions out there lads and you can bet your ass are about to sign one of them jesse smith he's a center back here 20 years of age, 65 overall. We don't have many prospects at center back. We need to bring them in when they pop up. Jesse Smith, welcome. We almost did our best to bottle the top of the East, but we finished one point ahead last year of last year's champions, Philadelphia, and we are going to get a first round by Western Conference. We finished, okay. The Western Conference, Rail Salt Lake end up finishing top on 63 points, but we are going to win the MLS Supporters Shield as the best team in the regular season but now it all comes down to the playoffs. Who are we going to be facing in the second round in the conference?
different semis. Of course. Of course it is. We're versing New York Red Bulls, the team that eliminated us last year in the first round, looking to get our revenge. Into Miami. They beat into Miami in the first round. We could have been versing Messi and Suarez, but instead, we're going to be versing Frankie Amaya and John Tolkien. Come on, fellas. Let's not go out for the second straight year to New York Red Bulls. Jonathan David, show them how it's done. Come on, lads. Oh my god, that was way too close. We have beaten New York on a penalty shootout. Oh my god, they missed a penalty. It was nil-nil in regular time. Two all in extra time. And we are going through by the skin of our teeth to the Eastern Conference Finals. The game is making us work for it. If we want to get out of the East, we take on last year's winners. Last year's winners... Philadelphia, the team that beat us in season one. We're getting to tick all of our Avengers off here. Can we get another one? I do not want another penalty shootout here, lads. That New York game put some stress on the body. We're at home against last year's MLS champions to win the Eastern Conference. We do it! Jonathan David, that's the difference maker. We spent them big money for him. We break the Toronto club record and we are heading to the MLS Cup final, looking to get Toronto their second MLS Cup since 2017. But if we want to do it, we're going to have to take down Sporting KC. They're infamous for their We Like Barbecue chance. And if you ask me, as an NFL fan, I think Kansas City's had too much success lately. Let's go complete this rebuild with Toronto. Wanted to check the stats before we got into it, though. Jonathan David, huge season. Our front three have absolutely killed it here. David with 21 and 5. Corbin Yu with 15 and 5 and Buchanan 11 and 2 big season from the lads 85 overall come on let's go win the MLS and make Osorio a champion in his final game can this team of only Canadians get the job done against the American outfit of Sporting KC here we go ladies and gentlemen the MLS final is gonna be Toronto FC's one of our first signings, Kone, is going to get the winner. Osorio gets the yellow card in his final game, but he goes out as an MLS champion. We've done it, ladies and gentlemen. Rebuilt Toronto and restored pride to Toronto FC and Canadian football. But lads, if you enjoyed today's rebuild, it's a little bit different to normal. Make sure you click here to subscribe if you aren't already. And if you want to watch another video, click here to do that.